Hi. <laughs> Happy Magical Readathon, the first semester in 2024. Yay! Had a bit of a slow start today, so I came back from visiting my family two days ago. It's a two hour difference between there and here. And so for the last couple of days, I've been waking up at like 7.30, 6.30. And then today, for the first day, <laughs> because <laughs> like of course it would be today I woke up and I was like oh I did not hear like I must have heard my alarm but I did not I did not remember hearing my alarm and clearly like turning it off and stuff so <laughs> I woke up and it was already pretty much 10 o'clock and I was like ah fantastic I mean technically 9 because we did just get like the uh, daylight savings so we did put one hour forward. Anyway, all is that to say, I was excited to get a head start of the um, first day of the readathon. There's always quite a chaotic day. I don't normally get a lot of reading done because I'm busy watching people, uh, you know, put up their TBRs, putting the templates up on Instagram, saying hello everywhere, which I still haven't done. Um, and it's already one o'clock, well, quarter to one. I still have some planning to do because I just, I don't know, I felt like I we were doing a lot of preparing, but then I'm still not feeling prepared. But I'm also trying to take it a little bit easier because it doesn't matter. It's all for fun. And I say this to people all the time and I allow all of the quote unquote cheats and, and adjustments and, and everything to others. But myself, I'm like, oh no, but it's serious. But it's not. Like, it's not serious. <laughs> so I'll just here for fun. I'm gonna do a little bit of makeup because I think I want to... Um, do a live stream. I'm really struggling to focus because I feel like I have so many like different things on my like I need to still do list but I've not written them down and I think maybe this is the crucial mistake because my brain keeps trying to like make sure I don't forget something um, which let's be honest I probably will forget something but again that's fine it's not a big deal anyway as a little reminder my chosen profession is still the the dream walker I have been kind of tempted to make a new character though, just for the fun of it. <laughs> the only thing stopping me is that I obviously film in like Devantia's getup and I kind of technically would need to get a new getup for that. And that's pricey. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't need to be, I could just, anyway, I could still announce as Devantia either way. It's just a general kind of fantasy outfit either way anyway i'm rambling you'll just have to you'll you'll deal with it <laughs> you'll have to deal with it i don't think we can change that fact today beautiful done <laughs> so a dream walker i believe needs like five or seven books i should know yeah as you may have noticed i have actually not set and published my tbr for the month <laughs> this would sound like i'd be like and that was on purpose no, it wasn't. I was just, I was just scrambling to do stuff and then I went away to see my family and was away from my bookshelves and I was just too busy. And so basically, by the time that I came back, I could have set a TBR and I did somewhat. Like I set a, I set myself like a, a guide of what I think could happen. And then I was like, I either rush to film it and literally publish on like the, today, like the 1st of April, or I can just not set a TBR because it's kind of late either way. It doesn't really matter. And just, we can just mood read this time. I've never done that for the, for the, um, well not mood read, but like we can set it as we go. And I've never really done that for the Magical Readathon. And I think it could be fun because I do think that kind of also works with my reading enjoyment recently in the recent months and even though when I said the TBR I can obviously always change it I thought why not maybe it'll be a bit more interesting for you guys as well not knowing what book is next I've only kind of noted a couple of books for the promise that I do need if I do read those and have some time I might just go over and do some other classes I personally will not be doing the quest because I know the correct answers <laughs> And it always feels like it's just too cheeky. Like obviously there's choices and there's no like correct, correct way, but there's obviously like ways. I mean, I don't want to say too much <laughs> because it, the exploration of it is a big part of the side quest. And similarly to the alchemy one, like I feel like to me, it's it's basically cheating. It's like, I know the answer, so I can't really play, you know? But that's okay with me because we have, you know, qualifications and opportunities if we so wish to and also I can just be an overachiever and try and get the other books. That is also if and a big big if 
I actually finish the books that I need, which we'll see. I am so excited to tell you that I have, in fact, already started reading, which is kind of hilarious because um, I read two pages, so does that really count? Yes, yes it does. So, uh, where's the drum roll? My legs at the drum roll. <laughs> the first book in, in my TBR is... Shades of Grey. Not to be confused with, um, <laughs> what's it called? Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> because um, I think that we saw with the Patreons, we saw some comments on, no, so, sorry, some reviews of people saying um, they accidentally read the Shades of Grey, thinking it was Fifty Shades of Grey because they had like a book club that, were, that was reading that and like really enjoyed it, but at the same time it's hilarious to think of that scenario. Um, Anyway, Shades of Grey is another Jasper Ford book, and I have read his, what you call it, Early Riser recently, and for the D20 experiment, and I actually really enjoyed it, and I thought it would be quite fun to do, and of course, it fed the uh, circle prompt. For the cover that I've, I've seen that matches the cover that I have, because I bought the second book, <laughs> I bought the second book thinking it's just his new book. I think I mentioned it in the video as well. No one, I think, corrected me, which is funny, but like the book that I bought, it's it was actually in the D20 wall, which I have taken down at the moment. Um, and it was like quite high up because I put that there after reading Early Riser. Anyway, um, it was it was there and I didn't realize that it was, but once I, once I looked on Goodreads, it said Shades of Grey number two. And I was like, oh. I didn't, I didn't know. So this is a bit of a bamboozle. But anyway, the, the cover that my book has, has a matching cover for the first book, which is lucky because the current cover that is on my Kindle version, because I got the Kindle version, um, it's honestly, genuinely no offense. I feel bad because it, like someone obviously like made that cover and I'm really, really sorry for but like it's so bad. It's not the best. I'm sorry. I'm really really hopeful that I'm gonna like it. Anyway, um, I don't know too much about it yet. It's a, like it's a dystopian story where the class system is the color that people can see. So our main character I think is a red, which I can't quite yet grasp if it's a good one. I don't think it's like an elite one. I don't know, it's such a weird, <laughs> it's a weird concept, which I love. But it's still one of the um, primary colors. So they're not like super underdog. I genuinely, I don't know. I honestly, I can't, I can't tell. And so far it kind of follows the same type of writing style that the um, early riser had, which is very much like Douglas Adams. What else was it compared to? You know, like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, if you read that, I feel like it's very reminiscent of that. Anyway, it's quite quirky. I don't know yet what the main hook is. So once I know, I'll let you know, obviously without spoilers. Um, but that's kind of the plan. So I'm gonna continue getting ready and then I will catch up with you then. Student of Aurelium, look no further, learn no further. But the children of the purple rodent, aka the rats, graciously opened their arms for new purple pups and stunned emotional development in children. The moon wardens or lunar actors hired and trained by skilled story weavers to make us believe travel to the moons is possible when they are in fact powerful illusions projected onto the night sky. Oh, it doesn't have the sound. Normally it has a sound. I'll do it for you. Ta-da! Hey, now everyone, <laughs> that's a pretty, pretty big one. Everyone is getting 10 points to their guild reputation if they are in the order of the crescent, which is, as we established, 37% of you. <laughs> no! <laughs> Welcome to the lunch break. It is not, in fact, Tuesday, which I keep thinking that it is because Monday was a bank holiday, so my brain is all messed up with the, um, with the dates, but it is actually Wednesday, and I have not yet read anything. Determined to do some reading today, and I'm determined to enjoy it is the, is the key. I'm hoping to have a better update for you next, but something very, very exciting came in the mail. The new book by uh, Holly Jackson, who wrote Good Girls Get to Murder and uh, Five Survive, which I both could not put down. So this might be the exact thing that I need 
fun undercover, under underbelly, special first edition. Um, have a little family tree here. Does it have stuff? I don't think there's any other graphics in, in there. These books have always been um, just really immersive for me and hard to put down, and that is exactly the energy we're looking for. I don't know that I'm gonna swap to it just yet. <laughs> I am gonna be using it for my um, color wheel, I believe. I, I did get a gray color, and I think this does, or oh, is that what I, no. Mm -mm. I'm lying, but very excited is an understatement of what's happening with this arrival. Good evening. I come to you with a not so fun update, to be honest, but it's it's fine because we have a solution. Anyway, this was my alchemy read actually for the circle on the cover. You can, can you see it? There's a circle, there's a sun basically. Um, and I got to this point in the book and I, <laughs> it feels both more or and less than it should be. Um, it's over 100 pages. I will log those 100 pages. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to swap DNF this one. So it's a definite DNF for now, but I do think I want to return to it another time. I'm just not vibing with it. I just, I just keep drifting. I can keep like focusing on it. It's not the right time for it, and I don't know, maybe it's the book. Maybe it will never be the right time, but I would give it another go. I think I would just need to be in a different mindset for it. Fortunately for me, I am playing with Avanti. I've restarted my, po well, I restarted the main points because I lost track of the small points. Um, and I'm playing on the hard difficulty for the guild points. So I'm currently on the assistant level, which is or at least from what I've tracked, I'm on an assistant level. If I am above that, it just doesn't count because I didn't track it, so that's on me. But actually it worked out now because that means that I get to uh, count a genuine DNF as a book, um, as a prompt complete. And honestly, I feel like, I mean, I've spent all these days, I mean, I didn't read every day, but I've spent, I feel like I've spent a decent amount of time trying to read this and it just, I just, it's fine, but I'm not. I'm not invested, and I'm not having. I'm not having as much fun as I should for the readathon type of read as well. So we're just gonna move on because it's not giving. It's not giving me joy. <laughs> so we're gonna move on, and I'm going to move on to the reappearance of Rachel Price because I think I really, really need something with like high intrigue to counteract what just happened as well, but also just in general to get me back into the reading space because I feel like maybe I'm slumping, which is a terrible, terrible time to slump. So this would be my psionics and divination prompt i believe which is a prediction bingo it is currently close to 11 o'clock and i do want to do some reading before i fall asleep so we are not gonna actually do the predictions just now and i'm gonna do it i don't and i don't anticipate to have a lot of it read now so we're just gonna do some predictions uh, tomorrow, which maybe works out because maybe I'll have a little bit of a, a slightly better idea of what's going on in the book, even though I probably will try to not do spoilery predictions because I'm obviously doing the vlog, otherwise it would be all right. But yes, yeah, Psionics and Divination. But we can make one prediction now, and that is, let's predict a five star. Let's just, or like four or five star. Let's predict that it's gonna be either a four or a five star. Let's manifest it. Um, and let's, another prediction can be that it's going to be um, a nine or more on Copile for Intrigue. That's two predictions made. <laughs> we'll make the rest tomorrow. I've done a fair, a fair amount of reading yesterday, but I did succumb <laughs> to, to sleep. So I'm on page 45 of the reappearance of Rachel Price. I have sat down and written down my predictions because this is the prediction prompt for um, psionic and divinations. Psionics and divination. I did actually struggle to keep these with something that wouldn't be a spoiler because of the way that the book is, I feel. So I'm gonna read to you my predictions. However, please, Fast forward if you don't want to hear my predictions, even though obviously I have no clue <laughs> what actually will happen. So these are just blind speculations really, but I'm gonna be holding the book up. So when I'm holding the book up, it's still going. So fast forward until I don't 
have this in my hand anymore if you don't want to hear any of my speculations. And I'll do the same thing when I'm talking about, like later on, when I'm talking about whether or not they came true. For those who have read it, you can choose to say it. Also, uh, those who don't mind spoilers because you don't think they're gonna read this. But then for those who do care, you can skip it. Hopefully that, that works. I did a grid of three by four because I was really struggling <laughs> with four by four. I mean, I was struggling with three with four. Once I allowed myself some spoilers, it was uh, easier, but I have, I have them written here. So um, as I said yesterday, one of the predictions is just that it's gonna be four or five stars. We're really hoping. Um, then I have, we get one fake reveal, as in like one fake conclusion, and then actually it turns out that the conclusion wasn't correct and, you know, it's kind of like a red herring, but I feel like we're gonna go further with it. It's gonna be like, oh, this is all solved now, and it actually won't be, or there's gonna be a second thing on top of it. Just judging by some other stuff. <laughs> I predict a romance with a crew member. Again, I don't know all of them yet, but like this is set in a documentary style. Um, I feel like I've not mentioned that. I should mention that when I'm not holding this later as well, but there's a bunch of crew, like the, the main family, the, pr the Price? Price? Price family are American, but the crew of the documentary are British, because the author is as well. Um, then I have that is a new recording is going to be found, something that we have not seen before, because obviously all of the kind of home videos and whatnot were submitted before, but I feel like we're gonna discover a new one that's gonna put... I mean, this is this this bit is not in a in a clue. So if it, even if it doesn't incriminate a new family member as like a lead suspect, I would still count it as a correct prediction. But I also on top of that think that it will be incriminating for one of the probably one of the family members from whichever side of the family. I also predict that I'm gonna finish this in four or less days. Obviously I'm on day two technically, but it's a little bit cheeky because I literally started just before midnight last night, but we're gonna count it. So basically what I'm saying that I think I'm gonna read this before I upload this. So um, hopefully we're gonna be correct. I'm thoroughly enjoying it already and I'm only 45 pages in. So I have a feeling that this one could be correct. Um, next prediction is that the uncle is going to be involved. I'm not saying that necessarily he will be the culprit, but I feel like he will have something to do with everything. With either the disappearance or the reappearance and or, or something. There's, he's hiding something, I feel. Um, I think that MC will suspect her dad at one point because this is the dynamic that they're extremely close. She's very protective of him. But I feel at some point she's gonna falter in that and suspect her dad. I, this is not a prediction per se because I really don't know if I will, but I just, it's just challenging myself. So I put that, I guess, a twist correctly at around 60% of the book. I also guess that something bad happens to the cousin. The, we have a cousin who's a couple of years old, younger than our MC and our main character and our main character is very very protective of her and I feel like something bad will happen and obviously our main character will blame herself for that a bit. Um, I also predicted that at some point I will be reading this into the night which almost kind of already happened to be honest but we're gonna not count that previous one. I was wondering if the if the title of the book is misleading and actually the mother will not reappear could be shooting myself in the foot. This is like that they both die at the end and then you think that they are not gonna die at the end. So it's like, it's in the title, but maybe, maybe she does not reappear. But I do actually want the mother to reappear because I think it will be very interesting to see how that's handled. But I put it in the thing, so it's fine. Like if we don't, if we don't win it, then we don't win it. Um, and I also guess that one of the grandparents dies. So she has one left alive on the mother's side and then one left alive on the father's side. And I'm just predicting that if someone has to die, then maybe it's gonna be one of them. Okay, I'm gonna put it down um, and gonna tell you just a little bit of the premise is basically that the mother has gone missing when our main character was around two years old. I mean, not even maybe two years old. So she doesn't remember anything, but interestingly, she actually was on the scene with the mother when she disappeared and then reappeared and was discovered in an abandoned car on the road and like some neighbor found them. There's some CCTV camera footage that they're reviewing. We, we begin at the set of uh, this documentary that a British crew, because the main family is American, the British crew have gone over there and uh, are filming in exchange for some financial support to the family who obviously kind of needs it. So 
So I was digging everything up for our main character who is 18 and just has very kind of negative feelings towards her mother. I've, that's what I'm sensing is very um, unresolved and um, we already have displayed some behaviors that are very much the coping mechanism and then there's a lot I think brewing underneath so that's quite interesting and I'm, I'm very enjoying the I'm very much enjoying it. It's, it's, it's easy to read, very approachable, just same as all the other books that are written by the author that I've read, which is Good Guys, Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and then also Five Survive. I know not everyone loves Five Survive, but actually I really did. Oh, well, not really did, but um, it's not a book I it's, it's not a book I think about often at all, but it was very entertaining and it's exactly what I kind of look for in the in these. And even though we already have quite a quite a few characters, they're very distinguishable and very easy to kind of remember who is who and it's not confusing, which I think can be quite hard to do in under 45 pages. Um so I think there's some credit for that as well. But it's boding well, which is great because I was expecting it to bode well and I would be quite disappointed if it didn't. I am going to uh Raman Place, which I'm very excited for. I'm meeting a friend who is extremely talented as well. Um, so I'm also very excited to hang out with her. And then um, when I come back, if I'll have any type of energy left, I will be delving right back into this. But if not, I will definitely be doing a lot of that tomorrow, which is Friday. Nope, Saturday. That's the one. <laughs> it's the weekend anyway. But that's the update. Very much going well and um fingers crossed it stays that way and i'm quite quite intrigued already and honestly i'm again not far in so to be already hooked in it's quite nice where are we going logan we're going yeah. for a treat sandwich sandwich for a treat <laughs> going for a fancier breakfast this saturday morning um I'm feeling very shattered, but it was a very nice day meetup yesterday. Um, but I, I feel like I, I slept, but I didn't sleep. That's how I'm feeling. But um, so we're going for a very nice sandwich from this place called Patina. Patinas? Patina? I'm not sure. And then I'm very <laughs> excited to delve back into my book because I think I'm actually over 100 pages though and I was reading it, I was just, I'm just reading it physically whenever I can and then I, if I can, then I swap to audiobook, but I'm having a great time. I have reread the synopsis though and it does literally say there that the, uh, like, Rachel Price does reappear, but I'm gonna keep it, keep it, I'm most suspicious. We all panicked, but um, it's all good. It's a happy ending and uh, what an event for us. If we have ever had any doubts that we were chaotic little group, I don't think we need to doubt anymore. <laughs> so hurrah for that. Okay, I have an update for you and the update is that I finished this book literally one minute to midnight last night, which is great because I actually get to get 40 whole points for um, the guild points because we're sprinting the whole bloody day yesterday on Saturday with the Patreons, which was very, very fun. And uh, we spun the wheel quite a few times. We're quite generous with that. It was funny because I wasn't even trying necessarily to get it in that date and I kind of lost track of time, which is always a good sign for the book. And uh, I looked at the clock and it was literally one minute. I had one minute spare. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't know if I enjoyed it as much as the other ones, but it's still definitely gonna be at least four star. I just don't quite know if it's gonna get to the five star mark. And it's particularly of how it like wrapped up and the resolution of it all. I do have some thoughts and I've decided I'm also gonna put the um, actual shot in black and white so you kind of know when I stop talking about it in a spoiler way because we gotta go through my predictions. So I'm gonna put it, so spoiler warning, please pause or fast forward if you don't want to know what has happened in here. It will get spoilery and I will be talking about a little bit about why I'm not extremely happy with the with the way that it resolved, but it will massively spoil the book. So please don't watch it <laughs> unless you read it. And I'll get back to you when I'm back in color, all right? 
Okay, so first of all, let's do the bingo. And of course, if I get the bingos, I gotta go and buy a book and we're going to a place where there is a bookstore. So we're going to see uh, Dune part two actually. <laughs> but um, al alongside in that same building, there is a little bookstore, it's not the biggest one, but there is one. So I might, if we have time, stop there if I actually get a bingo, which, you know, not sure if I will. <laughs> I guess let's figure that out. So four or five stars. I do not see this being below a four, so we can scroll that off. We'll get a fake reveal. Well, throughout the whole book, she was obviously very much suspecting her mother and there was a point where we were like very convinced as to how she's done it, but I don't know if I can count that because it wasn't, it never felt truly final and you can really tell how her inner issues were the leading cause of all of these suspicions and the abandonment issues and like the um, kind of core belief and I guess also father's manipulation and how she would think of her mother throughout growing up um, was very much at play there. So I'm gonna say maybe no, but we may revisit that if that's the only one we need to get a bingo, we'll see. Uh, romance with a, new, with a crew member, we actually did get a tiny bit, but it counts. This is fun because I actually don't remember, I know it was like, like a few days ago, but... <laughs> new recording is found. I mean, technically, yes, and I will be stretching here quite a lot, but we do go and see the woman at the clothing store and she does have a screenshot of a footage of the CCTV of her store thinking that it was the woman. Well, it was, but... Um, so I'm gonna count it, because I'm cheeky. <laughs> Read in four days or less? Yes, correct. Uncle is involved. Ooh. He was involved, and he had suspicions. He wasn't involved in the disappearance, but he was involved because the daughter was also her daughter. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna count it and be generous with that one because he was involved in a sense and then he was involved heavily at the end, so we're gonna count it. Um, main character suspects her dad. <laughs> so, I mean, I guess at the end, yes. <laughs> also, also, I mean, he was the culprit, so, um, naturally that would fall at one point or the other, um, so yes. The way that I've written that, um, implied that he wouldn't be the main guy, but, you know. There, there it is. Guess the twist at 60%. I don't know what to count as a twist. I have guessed the twist that the cousin is gonna be her daughter uh, pretty early on because of all of the hints about the uh, aunt not showing and then and showing suddenly and it was very heavy-handed in that and then obviously it was solidified when in the book we read um, we are being hidden instead of I am being hidden or like being kept, whatever the wording was. Um, so I did predict that quite early on. I did not predict the grandfather holding her, but I did suspect the grandfather majorly because obviously very conveniently does not have the memories. So I'm gonna count it again. Something bad happens to the cousin. I mean, yes, because she learns that her biological parents are not the parents that she was believing they were. She obviously believes that she has killed Charlie, which she, I think that the mother has lied to just take her, you know, it's like a lie to daughter to stop thinking about it. I'm gonna not count it because honestly, when I written this, I was thinking more like a kidnapping or something a bit more direct, um, but we could count it. So we'll come back if we need to. <laughs> um, read into the night. I mean, yes, yes, I did. Mother does not appear obviously incorrect and I honestly should have swapped that because it's literally well not only is it in the name obviously <laughs> but we are kind of like led to believe slightly at one point that maybe it's not her real identity um but it is also in the synopsis which I have reread after I read uh, after I put this in and I was like ah uh, idiot um but it is what it is I put it there um so we don't get that one and one of grandparents die no, actually, we did not get a death. So we actually still got this bingo, this bingo, is that it? That's it, two bingos. <laughs> so I get to get two books. So actually, all is well. Okay, and just before I move on to, you know, non-spoilery back for, for majority of the people, but I just wanted to say my, you know, 
we're gonna not delve into, you know, the kind of logistics of how they would actually get away with it and blah, 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 blah. Um, or how she would be able to, you know, drag the, the dead bodies to then drop them into the shaft. That's like a whole different thing in the mind. Um, I, the main and slightly annoying thing for me was how we were dealing with the whole parental label. I just, I felt like that needed to be a little bit more nuance or a little bit more of a conflict. I feel like the cousin, I mean, I understand it, she's a, but also she's a teenager, but the mother is not, and I feel like she should have spoken to her a little bit more about, you know, she is her biological mother and obviously they want to be together and that's grand, but I understand that the relationship with the parents was not necessarily the best, but it didn't sound like it was the worst either, unless I missed it. So to really do like a very quick swap between who you see as your parents just because of biology really kind of rubbed me the wrong way when thinking about adopted people and I just felt like it was just so instantaneously erased and she was like talking to her you know adoptive mom I guess uh Sherry which no one liked Sherry like I, I get it it's an almond mom living your dreams through your daughter kind of situation but at the same time she did care about the daughter. She was raising them. They both, both of the parents clearly loved them. Jeff kind of sacrificed himself for her. She didn't seem to have really grieved him. I know that there was a couple of, um, obviously Jeff has passed away and she didn't seem to really care that much for it. And we have obviously mentioned that they didn't have the closest of relationships, but still that seemed very jarring and very not believable, even though it is obviously a teenager and they can be difficult with the parents. I just felt like it was very <laughs> written off as just something to quickly replace. And obviously them, them sending the mother away to meet Jeff, who was obviously not gonna be there. And I know that they threatened, oh, if you ever come back and contact us, we're gonna go to the police because of the DNA. And obviously that would not look great, but it does kind of re redeem this approach by the fact that the mother does not actually say no. And she does take the, the offer to leave and leave her daughter behind. Obviously that is not fantastic. But I feel like from a kid's perspective, you'd still have way more conflicted feelings than we have kind of discussed there. And I understand there was not a lot of time to show or discuss that and the kid was, well, I say kid, she's 15, a teenager was keen to go and go and with, be with a new family and her, you know, the family that she saw the most was Belle. Either way, I get that, but I just, it didn't ring realistic to me and the complexity of that, but I appreciate that we didn't necessarily aim to discuss those topics as much but it left me a little bit dissatisfied with that i feel like it should have been way more emotionally charged even though we already had a lot of going on but yeah they also you know they're sending the mother away and 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 with the false premise then jeff is gonna be there there's a lot of i mean sherry was obviously not fantastic but i don't know if she quite deserved what happened there because all they did was really take in a kid that they thought was taken from someone who couldn't keep him uh, her and uh they really wanted and loved the child. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. Obviously they were also not great people. And again, the fact that she did accept the offer to leave was, you know, speaking volumes, but still, j that's just my thoughts. Let me know if you agree or disagree, but of course, mark it as a spoiler in the comments, but I've not sat with this for long enough. Maybe I will change my mind. Or maybe something you say will change my mind, but those are my thoughts, um, but very happy to have read this. And it was definitely something that I needed to just go and read something that keeps me turning the page. And I was very thoroughly intrigued throughout of it. I think the intrigue has dropped slightly just towards the end, maybe the 50 pages, which is ironic because that's when everything was kind of happening but it was still extremely high. It's probably gonna be like 9, 9.5. Um, so overall, very happy with it. And uh, I have actually already started the next one, but <laughs> we have passed Alchemy and that is done. The star is what I actually need. Has Psionics and Divination just now. And I have now started Art of Illusion. I'm listening to Gender Games by Juno Dawson, who wrote uh, HMRC, which was one of my super beloved books. Um, so I'm very thoroughly enjoying it already and I'm not far in at all. You can tell that she can really emphasize the bits that need to be emphasized. And it's already filled with humor and some pop culture references, which makes it quite easy to listen, especially when it's obviously going to be quite emotionally charged subject. And I, and there's some bite to it and I'm really, really excited to listen to more of it, but we're gonna go 
so I'm not late to the movie, uh, and I'll update you a little bit later. I can hear you blink. Look where my eye is in the dot. It makes it look like I've got a monocle. I am here to wrap up the video because <laughs> the Monday has been Mondaying, so mm -hmm. I thought I'll have a little, a little, <laughs> a little guest here to also update everyone on how your reading is going. I don't know. I'm, I'm a certain amount into Golden Sun. Certain amount. Good, mm -hmm. good. It's audiobooks. I can't remember. I think chapter 18. You enjoying it? Yeah, I spoiled myself. Yeah, you did. I forgot who her character was, so I went on the wiki. Don't That's do a that. rookie mistake. <laughs> and he's like, I didn't expect to be spoiled. Like, who's this character? In and then, the info and then a section. Of, a bunch of aliases for who the character is, and I'm like, ah, that's a spoiler. Mm, it was a big spoiler as mm. well. I've done no extra reading, but I do have some new books to show. Uh, do you want to share your drawings? I've drawn Dwarf Woman. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> that's just an outline. But yes, I have some new books to share with you. There's a little bit of a theme, I can see if you assess it out. I'm just Why is there a picture of a hummingbird? <clears throat> oh no, it's a sparrow. Is it? It's a sparrow. Is it? It looks a bit like a hummingbird. Presumably actually. it's a sparrow. That would make sense. I thought sparrows are the ones with that tail. It's a swallow. Oh. It's a swift. The first book is called The Sparrow. This uh, sounds like it could be a very interesting take or also sounds like it might not be the kind of take that I think it will be. <laughs> so, but it, whichever way, I think it's going to be an interesting topic to explore. And it's, I think, basically a book with first contact with aliens. At the back here, it sounds like it's it, the humans do what humans do. <laughs> and they send Society of Jesus... They went so that they may come to know and love God's other children. So it's basically spreading your religion, I guess, as a first contact. So I think it's going to be a very thought-provoking one. It's chunkier than I thought it's going to be, actually. So I don't know if it's going to be for the readathon necessarily. We'll see how it goes. But it's very intriguing in the actual synopsis, which I'm going to put here if you want to pause and read that as well. Um, very, very intrigued, slightly apprehensive, but only slightly because I don't know what the angle is, but I'm gonna be intrigued, I think, regardless. Then the next one is I Who Have Never Known Men. Um, this, I believe, is somewhat of a classic, if I'm not mistaken. Let me check the years again because I could be wrong. 1988? That count? I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe 1995 is actually a bit confusing. Mm. And this is a short read, but I've heard that it punches in the feelings quite a bit. It's quite thought-provoking. And I am just going to read the synopsis for you for this one because I, I fear of not describing it correctly because it's a little bit different. So we start with a little quote. It says, For a very long time, the days went by, each just like the day before. Then I began to think, and everything changed. Deep underground, 39 women live imprisoned in cages. Watched over by guards, these women have no memory of how they got there, no notion of time, and only vague recollections of their lives before. As the burn of electric light merges day into night and numberless years pass, a young girl, the 40th, 40th prisoner, uh, sits alone and outcast in the corner, but soon she will show herself to be the key to the other's escape and survival in the strange world that awaits them above. And that reminded me a little bit of, like, portions of the... E OA? OA? That's it, mm. right? Portions yeah. of the OA. And that's why I kind of wanted to give it a go. I'm sure it's going to be very, very different, <laughs> but I'm, I'm very intrigued by the premise and it sounds, sounds grim and it's probably going to be very sad, so excited. And then the last one, have you, have you sussed out the uh, subgenre here, <laughs> is called... Anomaly or the anomaly it says when flight air France 006 enters a terrifying storm the plane inexplicably duplicates for every passenger on board that day There are now two a double with the same mind body and memories Just one thing sets them apart one plane leaves the storm in March the other doesn't land until June for world leaders The emergence of the June flight raises serious alarms. No science faith or protocol can explain this unprecedented event <sighs> So tired of that word <laughs> But for the passengers a bigger question is at stake, what happens to them now that their life is shared, what happens to those who land in June when their March uh, doubles make decisions that will change their lives forever. And as the doubles prepare to meet, they have an extraordinary decision to make. If there are two of them and just one life, who gets to live it? Sounds very intriguing. Want some sort of award here. <clears throat> because I live apparently under 
a rock. I actually haven't heard anyone talk about this. So if you've read any of these three, please let me know because I would love to hear your thoughts. But I'm very excited for, this, for these editions. Obviously, this kind of speculative sci-fi is my kind of thing. I say sci-fi, I don't know if I who have never known men is even a sci-fi, but it sounds like it could be sci-fi adjacent at least or definitely speculative. Really hoping not a true story for that one. So interested, excited, and kind of hyped to see if I can actually swindle them somewhere into my TBR this month as well. But um, as I mentioned, I've started gender games, haven't gotten a chance to continue that. I'm on my lunch break, but it's been a very exhausting day so far, so I don't know if I'm gonna have the time because I'm gonna be editing this and uploading it right after, um, or the mental capacity to continue. But when I am ready and able to, in the week upcoming. I'm so excited for all the books that I want to read. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the first week is going well. The second part of the lore quest is also now open. I've uh, up late uploaded that yesterday. So if you're doing that, I'm hoping that you are excited by the map upcoming. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let me know how it's going. Uh, I will check in with you next week, the same time. And uh, yeah, that's it. Bye. Bye! I was just asking Logan which book is the most exciting and then we we're talking about the plain one and I said I think this is the book that is kind of like for the masses which is not like a bad thing it's just a different type of demographic and marketing and um what did you say? You said it would be like a TV adaptation? Like a generic TV adaptation with a disappointing ending. And I said this just sounds like a book that could also be in the airports and then I realized <laughs> that would be terrifying. Imagine reading that on an airplane in a storm. She's... Oh. Yeah? <laughs> okay, bye.